Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me for a video describing the foundational text of Dragon Ball Z. Now, a foundational text for me is a series that is not only a classic, it's also become influential in both the anime industry and anime fandom. It's one of those shows that's worth watching, or at least trying to watch, at least catching a few episodes of, just so you understand where a lot of these common themes come from. Now, Dragon Ball Z was the first massively popular shonen fight shows. There have been other shonen series before, some of it, many very popular ones, in fact, but Dragon Ball Z established a certain style of shonen show. In particular, it established this formula of a team of characters um, led by a central hero who fight a succession of weird enemies. Each enemy, who is almost always a guy for some reason, has some special unique power which the heroes must overcome, so often by outthinking it, sometimes by simply overpowering it. Dragon Ball Z also instituted the tournament, which strips all this down to its most naked. The characters are just fighting a succession of weird enemies, one by one. Dragon Ball Z is also set in this sort of fantastical science fiction universe of houses you can shrink down to the palm of your hand and other just kind of fantastical um, technology. And this is convenient for, um, uh, for a, a shonen fighting show because that means that the various characters' uh, powers and defenses and so forth are very elastic, meaning that they can, they can just shrug off a thousand blows if they want to because they happen to have skin made from rock or whatever. Um, this is also important because it allows the writer to, um, if they write themselves into a corner because of some power that makes a character massively overpowered, well they can just introduce another power, or another defense or something that renders that totally useless. Unfortunately, Dragon Ball Z also demonstrates one of the severest limitations of this formula. Um, in particular, um, some of these fights can go on for a long, long time. Infamously, Dragon Ball Z has the Goku versus Frieza fight, which goes on for just episode after episode after episode, as the characters charge things up and fire them and they don't have any effect, and it goes back and forth. Now, if you find a particular pairing uh, compelling, this is great, but if you don't, you have a long slog until you get to some, something that interests you. Now, interestingly, one aspect of Dragon Ball Z that's rarely duplicated in other series but is often considered a, an important part of it, is its hero, Goku. Now, on the sort of, of hero spectrum, Goku is closer to Superman, both in terms of power and temperament. He's a good guy, he does what's right, and he has basically no faults. Future shonen series, in contrast, almost always have a character with at least one hang-up, from Kenshin's dark past in Roni Kenshin, to Yusuke's um, sort of street punk attitude in Yu Yu Hakusho, and Ichigo's sort of street punk attitude in Bleach. One other thing Dragon Ball Z popularized was a reset button, which is set directly into the show. If you gather enough Dragon Balls, you can um, make a wish and you can get anything you want, including raising people from the dead. Um, this allows for characters who died to come back later in the show. Um, and Dragon Ball Z would also just play fast and loose with characters that you thought were dead. Um, this has become a big staple of the shonen genre, that you can just kind of bring characters back. It's often not as explicit as it is in Dragon Ball Z, um, but Dragon Ball Z certainly uh, made this a, an acceptable thing in the shonen genre. So there are other elements of Dragon Ball Z, of course, but those are the main ones that I think make Dragon Ball Z particularly uh, remarkable and particularly worth watching as a standard bearer for its genre. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.